Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, then hi, I'm Monisha. I was born and raised in India. I did my medical school from there, after which I decided to appear for PLAB exams and move to England. Currently, I'm CT2, that is co-trainee year two in the specialty psychiatry here in London. So today's vlog is all about GP training. I had put out a poll on my Instagram story asking you guys if you have any queries about it. So at the end of this video, I'm going to be answering some of your questions and also be giving my opinions about GP training training not that it matters but what I honestly think about it so without wasting any more time let's get into it So GP training stands for general practice. It's also called as family medicine or family practice or community medicine in various other countries. So GP training is for three years that is ST1, ST2 and ST3. So usually after you've done your MBBS, you do two years of foundation training that is FY1 and FY2, after which you could be applying for your GP training. So there are three stages to it. Stage one is long listing, stage two is the MSRA exam and stage three is the interview. So the stage one's criteria are you need to have your PMQ, which is your primary medical qualification. That means you should have finished your MBBS. After which you need to have two years of medical experience. That would be your FY1 and FY2 get counted. Or if you're from any other country, then you need to be having two years of medical experience after your MBBS. Three would be your GMC license. You need to have a valid GMC license to practice medicine here in the UK. And the fourth would be if you are a non-trainee or you're not from England, if you've not done your training or your MBBS, from here then you should have signed your crest form i spoke at length about the crest form in one of my previous videos in december and how i got into training and what is a crest form or the alternate competency form for non-trainees i'll put down a link below of the form and i'll also put down a link below of the video where i've at length spoken about the crest form So the website where you can be apply for GP training is the Oriel website. Oriel website is the one and only website where you apply for all specialties. In England, when you're applying for your training, which is equivalent to post-graduation in any other country, the one website where you go to apply is Oriel. Basically, there are three rounds to it. There's round one, then there's round one re-advert, and then there's round two. Round one usually opens somewhere around in November. Round one re-advert opens somewhere around in February and round two opens somewhere around in July. So for you to be beginning your GP training in August 2021, the application window has already closed because the process started in November. People are currently giving their MSRA exams and then they would be starting their training sometime in August. This year, there is no round one re-advert happening. I do not know the reasons why. Probably the pandemic has a role in it. But then there's round two opening, which is opening up in July. I'll get you the date very quickly so the round two applications open on 27 July 2021 this year and the closing window for the application is 17th August 2021 so you can be applying during these dates for your GP training your MSRA exam would happen sometime between 3rd to 10th September 2021 this year and the job offers would be somewhere around 21st September and the starting of your training GP training would start in 2nd February 2022 so if you're interested in GP training you can bookmark these dates and you can be applying sometime in July, the dates that I mentioned for your GP training to begin in February. So that's the stage one, which is a long listing. Then comes the stage two. So stage two is the MSRA exam, which is the multi-specialty recruitment assessment. A lot of specialties appear for it, including psychiatry, the specialty I'm in. I have again at length spoken about MSRA exam, the format of it, the subjects that it covers, and also what is the pattern and how does the scoring happen and everything. It's again in the video, how I got into co-training in London. I'm gonna put up the card somewhere up above here and also put down a link in my description box. So you can go and watch the video. It's called entire information related to MSRA exam. 
All right, the one thing I did not talk about in that video for MSRA exam is from where do you prepare for this exam? There are a lot of online question banks from which you can be preparing. There's eMedica, there is MCQ banks, and then there's Fast Medicine. The question bank that I used to prepare for my MSRA exam was Fast Medicine. There would be people who would say you need to study from eMedica or from Fast Medicine or from MCQ banks. It's completely up to you, whatever you're comfortable with reading. If you want, you can study from all the question banks as well. I stuck to Fast Medicine and yeah so that's a question bank i went to but you can be picking any of these they more or less have the same questions it's just to get an idea that you know what the format or the pattern would be or what are the subjects they concentrate a lot on So stage three is the interview. Usually for you to be getting an invite for you to go for the interview, you should have cleared your MSRA exam. Fortunately or unfortunately, there's no face-to-face -face interviews happening because of the pandemic. So all that you've got to do is ace your MSRA exam to get an offer for GP training. If you score more than 550 in your MSRA exam, then you get a direct offer to get into your choice of trust and your choice of city in GP training. It's the same as in psychiatry. So anybody who scores more than 550 in their MSRA exam gets a direct offer. Once in GP training, your rotations are either four monthly or six monthly. You have one and a half years that you're supposed to do in GP practice and one and a half years of your training you're supposed to do in a general hospital. So your rotations would be six monthly or four monthly. So you get to choose what are the rotations you want to do. And you would like to do a mixed pack of various rotations where you get, you know, wider range of experience because ultimately after three years, you're going to become a GP consultant and you're going to be having your own practice or be a part of a practice. It will be preferable for you to have a lot of experience from various different specialties in those three years. Also during your GP training, you're expected to clear the MRC GP exams. All right, so now I'm gonna be answering some of the questions you guys sent to me on my Instagram story. So the first question is, is it very competitive? Do you have any other subspecialty after completing GP training? As far as I've heard, if you do well in your MSRA exam, it shouldn't be that difficult. I've answered these questions previously also when people have asked me about getting into psychiatry training. I don't know if it's difficult or it's not difficult it completely depends on you know how you perform that day in your exam obviously if someone has gotten through training they're going to say that yeah it's you know it's completely doable it's achievable and if someone who doesn't get through training they're going to say that oh my god it's so difficult to get in it's so relative but I think it's doable to answer your question if it's difficult or easy I can't say but definitely it's doable if there are any subspecialties or different specialties after you're doing GP training you can be a GP consultant with special interests a lot of people do minor procedures even in their GP practice other than minor surgeries or minor procedures few people also deviate towards say, aesthetics or you know dermatology so they have special interests in that as well few people who are interested in say orthopedics they also deal with like I mentioned minor surgeries or minor procedures in their GP practice you can also after your GP training if you are interested in sports medicine you can go into that I have a couple of friends who want to be they want to be like a personal GP doctor to a few of the football clubs in England there are so many other options after you've done your three years of GP training so it just doesn't stop there can someone enter into specialty training post GP training after you've done your GP training you can always go into any other specialty or even if you're in any other specialty you can go into GP training but if you are in your training it's ideal for you to not leave it midway you rather finish your training and then go and switch into another training for one reason that you can never go back to that specialty say if you are doing GP training and you're in your year two and you want to do any other specialty and if you leave GP training midway and go to that specialty you cannot go back to pursuing GP training again so you'd rather finish GP training and then switch specialties if you want to unless you definitely know that you would never ever consider you know GP training ever again or becoming a GP consultant then it's completely fine you don't have to suffer and it's not just with GP training it's with any other training if you're not enjoying medicine and you can always leave it midway and switch to any other training but mind you cannot go back to pursuing medicine training again so ask me are there tough exams during training like any other training you're supposed to clear your Royal College exams so in GP training as well you're expected to clear the MRC GP exams I don't know if it's difficult or it's easy because I haven't sat them but I have heard from people that it is not 
that easy an exam but i think that goes for any exam once you clear them you're going to say that oh it was such a breeze and if you don't clear them you're going to say that oh they are the most difficult exams on this planet so if i become a surgeon will my pay be equal to that of a gp again i've made an elaborate video on the various salary scales of doctors here in uk i will put up a link up above here but to quickly answer your question all specialty consultants have a definite fixed pay but gp consultants have slightly lesser pay because they don't have on calls and things like that so if you are going to be a surgeon then your salary would be higher than that of a gb consultant but if you're a surgeon or if you are a medicine consultant or an endocrinologist or you're a cardiologist or your psychiatrist your salary is the same but then the gp consultant they have a different salary only because they do not have on calls and their weekends are off someone's asked me what is the process after clearing the plab exam for img from india well, after you've cleared your medical school from india and you've done your one year rotatory internship you get your primary medical qualification then you can apply for your plab exam and after your plab exams once you get your license if you've had a couple of years of experience of working in india already then you can apply for gp training if not then you can come here and work as a non trainee and get those two years of your experience and then apply for gp training even if you've had work experience in india i would still advise you to work as a non trainee here in nhs before applying for a training specialty post only because there is a stark contrast between how the system works and how people work and what works and what doesn't work over here so i would advise you to ease into the system get to know the system better get to know the people better get to know the protocols the guidelines and just how your day to day life works over here before you jump into specialty training so even if you've had many many years of working in india i would advise work as a non trainee here before taking up any responsibility as a trainee someone's asked me what's the scope of a gp consultant if one decides to move back to home country pakistan after training because i'm not from pakistan and i've not done my mbbs from there i do not know what the setup is over there so i asked someone who is obviously from pakistan and has much more experience there and has moved to england and is working here in england so i asked dr nasir khan if you guys do not know who's nasir khan i mean I can't imagine anybody who's an IMG and doesn't know Nasir Khan. But anyway, so I asked Nasir about it. He told me that Karachi has a proper setup for GPs at Aga Khan University Hospital. I hope I'm not pronouncing this wrong, but Liaka National Hospital as well. So no other city, as far as he's aware, in Pakistan has a setup for GP. But he said something very positive, and that made complete sense to me. That it doesn't matter whether there's a setup or not, a city you're in, you can come here, take all the experience, get your training over here, and you can always go back to your home country, whether. It's Pakistan, India, or anywhere, and you can go back and set up your own GB practice. So yeah, I think that was a very positive message, and I didn't think of it that way. If you're somebody who is worried about, you know, after doing your GB training, if there is a setup back in your home country or not, you can be the one starting the setup and probably work with private services or with government. It's completely up to you. I hope I have answered your question. This is not related to GB training, but a lot of you guys keep asking the same question: that when did you apply for training? How much time did it take for you to get accepted for the job, etc. etc again i'm going to keep referring to the same video that i made in december how i got into core training in london i have at length spoken about the entire process shown my portfolio and also mentioned my timeline that when i finished my medical school and what i did after that and how many months it took for me to get into core training here in london spoiler alert it was literally few months in i applied for core training here but i worked for one year as a non trainee before i got in so if you want to get the details of everything that i just talked about then i'm going to put up the card over here again so you can watch the video about how i got into core training here in london last bit about my thoughts on gp training and gp practice i mean honestly my thoughts do not matter but i just wanted to say this because i probably wouldn't get a chance to speak about it i wanted to thank all gps who are i mean amazing i just wanted to say that in my opinion it's one of the most difficult specialty I mean GP trainees GP consultants I don't know how you guys do it because there's restricted time limit to seeing each patient and you have to rely so much on your history taking skills and your examination skills because the turnaround rate of the investigation or the investigation results coming back obviously takes longer because you do not have all the equipments in your GP practice so I don't know how you guys do it I just wanted to say that it's commendable what you guys do my heartfelt thank you to you guys I just wanted to say that quickly in the end we've reached 
reached to the end of this video. I hope you found it informative and enjoyed watching it. Um, if you have any other suggestions for the videos I should be making, then drop it down in the comment section below. If you head to my Instagram page, I'm going to put a link down below. I mentioned a few GP doctors that I follow and I think that their content is amazing. I'm sure there are many more that I haven't come across. If there are any GP trainees or GP consultants that you would advise or you would recommend me following, then please drop down their names in the comment section. I would love to follow more doctors who are content creators as well. Yeah, that's the end of the video. If you've enjoyed watching this video, then you know the drill. Do give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, then please, please, please do. And drop down in the comment section anything that you want to ask or you want to say. And I recently reached 6,000 followers on my Instagram page. So if you want to, then you can follow me there as well. I'm quite active on Instagram as well. And I hope you're keeping safe and looking after yourself physically and mentally and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!